Ah, uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another vlog on BillyMorrison.net. I have four pages of questions to answer for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera with me all day. Nothing exciting going on. I'm just running errands and going to the gym, doing a few bits and pieces. But I can take the camera. I'll take the questions, and you get to join me. Here we are at the gym. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to do any camera work whilst I'm in there because I'm huffing and puffing and uh, trying to breathe. So um, I will hold on. I will be back after the gym and uh, I will do the first round of questions. I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Hi guys. So welcome to my torture chamber. Um, anyone who thinks I'm vain and shallow. This goes to show that I don't need a, an ounce of makeup on my face and a hairdresser to uh, go on camera. This is, like I said, my torture chamber. That is our number one, uh, which makes me look like this. And then this, which would look quite good in my bedroom. We do an hour, now I do an hour of that, which is called Pilates. And, uh, I do that every day. Um, I'm not gonna film myself doing Pilates. It's not a pretty sight. See you later. Okay, let's uh, race through some of these questions. Mary Beth is asking about where uh, musicians stand on stage. How do we decide that? I, I really think it's a case of who walks into the rehearsal room first. Uh, when you first form a band, get to the rehearsal room early, set your gear up, whatever side you wanna be, because that seems to be how it works. Um, I don't know, and also if a guitar, if, it, if it's a two guitar band, one guitarist gets the whole of one side of the stage and the other guitarist gets to share with the bass player. So it depends where the bass player is, you know. Bass players need to feel comfortable with the drummer, need to have a line of sight with the drummer to create a rhythm section. So it's all the bass player's fault, really. Uh, let me see here. Um, Merck was asking where Billy Duffy is in the latest Life Less Ordinary clip. Billy was actually away the week we had a film crew down at rehearsals shooting, so we are going to be doing some shooting next week, even though he's rehearsing and recording and all that kind of stuff with the cult, he's still very much a member of Circus Diablo, and we're going to shoot a little bit of footage next week to get Duffy's perspective on the whole Diablo situation. Um, let me see. Beth asks, at what point in this whole process, and I presume you mean the Life Less Ordinary process, did Jen come into my life? I met Jennifer, my wife, when I was sober, thank God, because if I hadn't, she would have run, she would have crossed the street and ran the other way. Um, so luckily she came into my life years after I sobered up. Maggie asks about alternate and open tunings. Do I use them? Absolutely. Uh, the simplest and most effective for me is drop D, which is uh, take the low E string, tune it down to D, and you have a whole host of heavy alternative voicings on the chords. And also open G tuning, best on a Telecaster. If you want to sound like Keith Richards, take the, take the E string off, tune it, tune the five remaining strings to open G, and uh, instant jump in jack flash. What else we got here? Do any Benita? Do any of my tattoos represent my rise from the ashes? Um, I'd love to say yes, but they don't. Ninety-nine percent of my tattoos are really uh, storyless. It's me going into a tattoo parlor and telling them to fill fill the skin in all all of this uh, lower arm stuff. All of that. That's pure um, tattooist. I gave them both forearms and said, just colour it in. KB is asking how how did Mark McGrath end up as a member of Camp Freddy because his sound is softer. Mark's not a member of Camp Freddy. He's one of our uh, resident guests, and uh, for anyone who's seen Mark play with Camp Freddy, they will tell you that guy is anything but soft. He can rock. You watch Mark Mark McGrath singing a Ted Nugent song. That's rock and roll. Um, that's all I've got time for right now. I'm going to go and shoot some guns with my friend Jack. I'll see if I can get some footage from there. And uh, I'll answer the rest of these later. I'll see you soon. Here at the gun range with my friend Jack. 
his jet. And we are gonna blow shit up. So mean. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> right, Billy. Ladies and gentlemen, the big bastard. Um, yeah. Yeah. Take his off. We're not dealing. Here, yeah, hold it up, right? You ready? Yeah. You ready? No, it's not. Look. Oh, well, the guy's dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like brown bread. All right, boys and girls, business over for today. Uh, I'm going to go up the tattoo shop. And uh, I'm going to go and see Todd. And we're going to go and see what he's doing up there. Um, it is also my wife's birthday today, so I've got to stop off and do something about that. Um, I think I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna do some more questions up at the tattoo shop, um, and you know what? I'm gonna concentrate because this is a brand new car, and I ain't gonna crash it today. There you go, Shamrock Tattoo, Mark Mahoney's place. Let's just go and see if Todd's crying like a little bitch. He is, he's crying like a little bitch. Look at that. Say hello to Billy Morrison fans Ed. all the world over, Todd Newman. Hello to Billy Morrison fans all the world over, Todd Newman. Look at that. See, that boy knows how to get a real tattoo right there. That's right. But normally you're on the other side of the camera. How does it, how does it feel being the subject? Feels good. It might change careers. This is going up online so the whole world, <laughs> the whole world can see it. So, uh, that was Mark Mahoney's place, Shamrock Social Club. Um, Todd getting his back tattooed. Um, Todd's normally the other side of the camera, so it was uh, nice to turn the tables for a change. I... Um, I want to answer about five questions in one answer. Obviously lots of people were talking about Life Less Ordinary. Vixen, Q, uh, Max, Linda, Merck, all were asking me basically the same question. Um, how did I get out? It's a great question. You know, the reality is I don't really know the answer. I, uh, it's certainly not my self-will and my self-control and my strength and my courage because I didn't have any of that shit when I was homeless and, and using. So, you know, what I choose to believe is that uh, something greater than me, something more powerful than me, chose to intervene and give me a way out and show me a way out, which I finally, after many rehabs and crisis centers and detoxes and, and uh, places like that, I finally took that way out. Now, I don't know why me and why not other people, what I do know is I've been given a second chance and I'm trying to do the best I can with it. 